Thank you for sticking around for growing with me you guys are amazing i love you guys and for those who are new here please subscribe and become one of flo's dolls yes welcome to the family so yes today's video is going to be a very interesting one because you guys asked that you would like to get to know me and i am going to give you just that a get to know me tag so i asked a few questions or not a few questions i asked you guys to ask me a few questions on instagram and i have your questions here i'm going to be answering your questions but before i get into that i just want to give you like just a basic background of who i am basically who is flo the doll <laughs> so yes my name is flo the doll no i'm just joking guys so my full names my government names like you guys call it are first name chris Neta, and then second name florence my surname is shavionja Yes, I'm a hater, okay. So let's get back to the names. My first name, Chris Neta, is a combination of my parents' names. My dad being Chris, short for Christoph, and my mom, Annette. So Chris and Annette, Chris Neta. Yeah. And then my second name is Florence. I was named after the nurse, Florence Nightingale. You all probably know the whole story. Yeah. I was born in Swakopmund, coastal town in Namibia. That's where I was born, that's where I was raised. Um, but for the first few years of my childhood, I lived with my grandmother in a village called Oshimbingwe. That, um, it's a few kilometers out of Karabib. And then I think around when I turned like five, six years old, that's when I moved back to Sokomon with my parents. And that's where I literally grew up. Um, that's where I attended my primary school, high school. Yes, my whole childhood. So I am one of many children for my parents. I am the second last born. I have a younger sibling, a baby sister. All my other siblings are older. Yes, I'm not, I cannot give you guys numbers right now. <laughs> we are a lot, period. We are a lot, okay? Yeah. And yes, I'm the second last born. I'm currently 31 years old. I have one daughter, my beautiful Avery Angel face. You guys probably know her and you know her as Faithy. Um, yeah, I think I will dive into the questions now and then the questions will probably get you guys to know me a little more. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in order if there's a question that... Okay, yeah, let's just get right into the questions. The first question is, are you married? No, I'm not married. I still tick the single box when I fill in a form. No, I'm not married. Um, what are both your surnames? Okay, like I mentioned earlier, my surname is Shavionja, which is my father's surname. So my mom's surname before she got married was Kaishiro Kere. Okay, so those are my two surnames. And then the next one says, hi, beautiful Flo. Where are you working now? Don't you miss Nictus? Okay, I guess... You guys are still getting to know me through these questions. <laughs> I'm currently working at Marsh Namibia, an insurance company. Um, do I miss Nictus? Of course, I don't miss Nictus, like Nictus, Nictus, but I miss the people. <laughs> I miss the people so much. I miss my boss. I miss my colleagues. Yeah, there are a few things that I obviously miss, but I'm having a beautiful experience where I am. I'm growing. You guys know I'm all about growth and I love it. I'm learning a lot okay and then it's the next question how are you such a sweet person amidst all the chaos of the world um i almost said i'm not a sweet person <laughs> thank you i'll take that as a compliment guys i'm using my daughter's phone and it just keeps locking itself um i'll take that as a compliment firstly <sighs> i guess guys it's just about keeping your head above the water Basically, like I was, I was having a conversation with someone where we were talking about, you know, different work environments and how they can be toxic and all of that. What I was saying is, whatever situation that I'm in, I just try to make it. I wouldn't say fun, but I, I try to make it work for me. You understand? If I'm somewhere and 
people are negative people are whatever i am not gonna adapt to that i am not gonna like you know just let it turn me into a, neg a negative person or anything like that i like creating my own happiness you can put me in a funny situation i will still crack a joke try to make the best of it so basically i think it just comes from within i don't let the outside you know influence my inside i just who i am on the inside is just what i try to just put out there so that it can just be around me and the ugly cannot get inside i hope i'm making sense but yeah what was the lowest moment in your life and how did you bounce back lowest moment in my life sure i would say 2010 because like i cannot even if i have to think the saddest year of your life the worst year of your life so i would also call that the lowest moment of my life that's 2010 that's when my father passed and i've never experienced pain like that it never goes away and yeah i would say that was the lowest point in my life and if i had to answer like how i bounce back from that i think i would say you know what grief does grief does one of one of two things or at least that's what i believed at that point it will either break you or it will make you i don't know if i'm making sense but yeah so in that moment obviously there was the first tough months and everything or let's say weeks where that it has consumed you and that's all you think about you can't eat you can't sleep you can't study or anything else and then afterwards you have to you know come back to reality so what i basically asked myself was or what i told myself is you know i loved my dad so much he was the best father in the whole wide world and i want to make him proud still because my dad was someone who was proud of you even for the most smallest of accomplishments he would be so proud of you he would uh, he was always just proud you understand if you just you know you do good in a test you do good in sports what he was always so proud of us so that thing he lived in me and i just felt like i want to keep making my dad proud so i told my myself i have a choice it's either i break down and i just become nothing make nothing out of my life because i'm failing i'm just not doing anything with my life or i take this and it fuels me up and you know i love my life and I work hard and I become the person that my dad would be proud of and that's I think I sat down I spoke to myself and that's what I decided to do and yeah from there on I just every time when I had a low moment or when I felt like I can't study or what I thought of my dad and we just keep on keeping on and I would push and I would guys it was a journey but yeah I'm sure he's proud so next question what are you grateful for this year oh guys from a sad question to this this year is such a beautiful year what am i grateful for this year guys basically because this year i started off like i would even always tell me something but like you know i look at my life even before all the beautiful things were happening and then i'm like if i had to look back at 2019 me these things that I'm experiencing now, these things where I'm loving, with my daughter, my relationship, uh, you know, my job, all these things are things that I dreamt of. I would think about and I would just break down and be like, when is it going to happen, you know, and it's happening. You know, someone else would look at my life and be like, there's nothing interesting going on. But guys, I am so grateful. It's those little things I'm grateful for. I'm not going to look at this here and be like, oh it was um the trip to france or getting a new ride or what it's just the basics basically just the life that i'm living like the roof i have over my head my daughter my boyfriend like it's so amazing and all the other beautiful things that are happening are basically just a cherry on the cake because it's there's a saying that says a grateful heart attracts blessings and i think that's how i entered this year being grateful for so little like i would sit and be eating and i'm telling peace and but like love look at this you know like we have a meal a warm meal every day a proper meal we're not even struggling or i would be like there's always fuel in the car even though we were you know not driving our dream car like i was just so grateful because it was not a lot but these are some of the things that i used to pray for and just long for and i was just so grateful like 
but overall this year has been such a beautiful year and but i'm grateful for just those basic things yeah how many siblings do you have the way i avoided this question <laughs> And guys, that's the thing about me. I like to come on here and be spontaneous. Like if I had gone through these questions, I would have been able to do proper research, not even proper research. We have a family group. And then the other day we listed like, you know, all of us, the siblings, and I could have gone there and looked at the number, but I didn't. So basically my mom has six biological kids. We have three boys and three girls. And then my dad has um, 18. 19 yeah so put together i have more than 15 siblings guys okay what is one quote that you love by one quote that i love by i love by a couple but my favorite quote hmm which one would that be Let's see. I guess um, the darkest hour comes right before dawn. Because every time I'm in a situation where things look really bad, I'm like, what is happening? Why are things not working out? And you know, those, you know, there are moments where things are not working out and it's nothing. And then there are major, major moments where it's like, it's bad, it's bad. So when I'm in a moment like that, I look forward to the blessing. Because I tell myself, like, when you are right at the bottom, when you're going through the worst, is when something big is about to come your way. So when I'm in that moment, like, I pray and I just have faith. I keep my faith and then I just tell myself, like, something good is going to come out of this human persevere and you must keep your faith and something so i guess the darkest hour is right before dawn basically when it right before dawn that's when it gets the darkest and then the dawn will break through and everything will just be beautiful the light at the end of the tunnel yeah okay let's go to the next question what is the age difference between you and yours your thoughts on age gap in love okay so the age gap between Pisampat and I is <laughs> three years he's three years younger um, my thoughts on age gap in a relationship or in love I think this relationship this relationship has changed my thoughts on that because I don't know if you've seen our previous videos where we were asked like you know how we met how what I thought about him my first reaction was just, what does this young boy want? Can he just be honest? He probably just wants to, you know, get with an older girl to brag to his friends or just to experience what it feels like. Because I did not believe a young boy can have such serious intentions with me. And yet, this is the one relationship that has been so intentional, so consistent, so serious. And, you know, and he's the youngest person I've ever dated. So... If you have to ask me right, if I have to answer right now, I would just say like the age cap is not what makes or breaks a relationship. It's the person, you understand, it's the person that you are dating. He could be 10 years older, 10 years younger, 5 years, whatever age cap. But who is he really and how does he treat you and what intentions does he have with you? That's what matters. So the saying age is just a number is real, guys. It is real. I can testify. Let's go on. Um, what is your favorite Bible verse and which one do you live by? So my favorite Bible verse has to be, definitely has to be, and I mean it when I say it has to be, Matthew 17, verse 20. I'm going to probably paraphrase it or say it my own way. Anyways, there are different translations, Bible translations as well. But it basically says, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can tell a mountain move and it will move and anything will be possible. I really, I really believe in that. Guys, I believe in having faith. You can pray all you want. You can ask for God all you want. But if you do not have faith, then it is all pointless. Because God even says, 
when you pray and you ask for something, believe that you have received it and it is yours. You believing that you have received something before you have even seen or received it, that's faith. So I am a strong believer in having faith. I mean, my daughter's name is Faith. You know, you guys call her Faithy, I call her Faithy. It's because her name is Faith, her second name is Faith. Because of also my pregnancy, what I went through and I kept my faith and I have this beautiful baby girl. So yeah, that is the Bible verse that I would have. Sorry guys. That is the Bible verse that I would say I love by and it is my favorite Bible verse. Okay. At what age did you start working? So I started working at the age of hmm, 21, 21, 22. Let's see. At the age of 22, right? That was because I, I matriculated at the age of 18 and then I was in university for four years. I did a four year degree and I started working that year right after my final exams because in that period where I was writing exams I was applying like a crazy person sorry I was applying like a crazy person and I finally got a job and then they told me I could start right after my exams and I did there was no key December things I finished my exams in October and I think I started my job in November or December somewhere there okay oh guys faith this phone just keeps locking itself so yes so i started working at the age of 22 okay and i've been working ever since i've never been like unemployed even for a month I've been, this is my third job and i've you know just gone from one job to the next one how much was your first salary <laughs> so actually i i thought it was bad hey but i shouldn't even laugh I thought my first salary was really bad, but just to find out like in 2023, people are even getting less than what I got back then. So my first salary, my basic was $8,000. So after the, they deduct the pay as you earn, the pension and social security, it came down to 5,000 something. So basically my basic was 8,000, but what I took home, what came into my bank account was 5,000 something. That was my very first salary. What do you love most about who you are? Okay, what I love most about who I am, I guess, is just me being myself. Like, I am very honest. I am very straightforward. I will say how I feel. I will never let anybody, like, you know, walk all over me. I am very passionate. I guess I have a strong, a very strong personality. If I don't believe in something, I will speak up. You know, I believe in the saying, oh yeah, you asked what, like, that's why I say I believe in a couple of sayings. I believe in the saying that says, um, I don't know how it actually goes, but when I speak to myself in the mirror, I tell myself, baby girl, speak up for yourself. Even if your voice shakes or it trembles, speak. You know, even if I leave a room knowing that, oh, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have said it that way, or I shouldn't have used those words, I'm always so proud of myself that I spoke in that moment and did not just keep quiet and let something unjust happen or let something that I don't believe in be, you know, forced on me or something. Like, I will speak up for myself and I love that about me. I will always be me and stand firm for what I believe in. What did you study? I studied accounting and finance. Yes, that's what I studied accounting and finance basically I don't even know what I want to add I studied accounting and finance um, how did you feel when you found out you were pregnant parents reactions aside okay parents reactions aside just me on my own how did I feel I was like hell no I did not feel good I'll not even lie to you I bought like my first my first reaction was like no and then the doctor because basically I went to the doctors and then first you go to the nurse they check your blood pressure and I think the doctor maybe t told her to do a pee test or maybe it was, I, I don't remember if it was like a general procedure. And then she doesn't give you the results. She sends you to the doctor, right? And when I walked into the doctor's room, that's when he told me like, no, congratulations. And I was like, no, he's like, yeah, I'm like, there's no way. So and then he said, I can go back to the nurse and test again. 
And when I came back, I could tell that nurse was annoyed with me. Like, you know, I'm basically calling her in incompetent by telling her to redo a test that she already did. But so my first reaction was denial. I couldn't believe it. And then after that, it was a whole lot of disappointment. It was not the plan. So how did you feel? Not good, disappointed, sad, angry, all of those. Yeah, but look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody I love more in this whole wide world than that's a faith issue. Tell us how you met. How I met Pisang Pet. Go watch the second video. My second YouTube video where Pisang Pet and I are answering questions together. Go watch it and go leave a comment and tell me, Flo, I watched and now I know how you guys met. Please do that. Okay. Um, how do y'all maintain a healthy relationship? I'm not gonna give you the whole overview. Also, that you can also go watch in our second, our my third video, our second video answering questions together, part two of us answering questions together. Maybe even in part one, because some there's a lot to say. But I would just say um, respect. Like if I have to give like the one thing that helps us maintain a healthy relationship, us staying healthy means us respecting each other. We do not, we try to, you know, even in moments that you don't like each other, you still love each other. That's what you must remember. Like you don't call each other names. You don't use vulgar language. You don't like, you maintain the respect, basically. You use a tone that you would want the other person to use on you. You use words that you will not regret, you understand? And that's how you maintain the respect. Because I feel like in those lowest moments, in moments where you guys are miscommunicating, arguing, or, you know, where you guys are basically pumping heads, that's where the, the respect is normally lost or like the toxicity comes in. So in those low moments, if you guys can still maintain being kind to each other and being respectful to each other in your better moments in the relationship, obviously then it will just flow. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. I think. Yeah. I think I answered all your questions. So yes, guys, those were all your questions answered. I'm not sure if it helped to if it helped you get to know me better, but I hope it did in the way that I answered the questions and tried to express myself. But I really appreciate you guys all for being here, and I would just. Um, like to close off this video with just telling you guys that basically I am a small town girl grew up in a small town Swakopmund as I mentioned earlier in the location But I always had big dreams like since my childhood I believe in guys where you come from will not determine where you will end up one day Where you grew up in what area or whatever surroundings or whatever um, Basically just where you come from it will not determine where you're going it's who you are, what you believe in, your dreams, and your faith. That's what will determine where you go in life. Okay? So that's one thing that I love by. I believe that I can accomplish anything that I put my mind to. But it takes a lot of hard work. Put in the work and you will get the results. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to comment, comment. Guys, I'll respond to every comment. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and click on that bell notification and get notified every time I drop a new video.